Uh, the third presentation is from William Mulliate. He's graduated in 1990s in Costa Rica with a background in computer science and informatics. Um, he was a software developer for seven years uh, before becoming a part of the informatics development unit at InVio in Costa Rica, where he worked for 11 years with information, uh, with information projects in specimens, species, ecosystems, collections, digitization, conservation, education, and tourism. Uh, in 2007, as a data node manager for Latin America, the Nature Conservancy, he got involved with GIS and geographic information layers on protected areas. Um, in 2011, he started at Missouri Botanical Garden as a global coordinator for the Biodiversity Heritage Library, and three years later became a technical director for the for the BHL US UK node. Now is a senior project manager at the Center of Biodiversity Informa Informati Informatics in Missouri Botanical Garden. So he currently works as a gatekeeper for the World Flora Online Project, and he has been a member of the TED Week for the last eleven years. And he also is a member of the CR Bio, a scientific research NGO in Costa Rica, created to promote open access to biodiversity information through information technologies and support environmental research, education, and decision making and conservation. Welcome, uh, William. Thank you so much Thank you. for your participation. And he will uh, give some information about taxonomic backbone of world flora. Can I, uh, can I share the screen, please? All right, thank you, everyone. I'm sorry for the delay on this. Um, I'm going to talk to you um, about our experience with the world flora line, um, particularly with the taxonomic backbone. Um, I might touch on other topics, like the content and, and things that we, we uh, have uh, experience in the project, um, hoping to that our our lessons learned could actually help you. Um, many of the, the things that um, we have experienced might not be the case in some of the, the countries or some of the institutions, but it could be adapted to the reality I know of many of us uh, since uh, um, it's, a, it's a common ground that we're doing with. So um, next please. So the, um, the World for Online uh, responds to the, uh, the target one of the uh, global uh, strategy for conservation of plants. Um, and one thing I'm going to say is the slides are going to be in Spanish, most of them, and I'm going to talk in English. So hopefully that's, that's good for both uh, English and Spanish speakers. Um, it responds to the target number one. Um, and it, uh, it meant a big advance to know the threats that the um, uh, plants had at global, global level, um, because it gave a, a framework to implement laws and actions and, and, and so on. Next slide, please. It was adopted in, in 2000 and 2002 first, and then updated for the next decade. Um, the main objective was to reduce the loss of uh, plant species for 2020. Next, please. As I said, objective one um, was to understand the biodiversity of the diversity of plants, document and recognize it. And the target one was actually to have a flora online for all the known plants. Next one. Uh, uh, flora on, online includes uh, not only uh, well everything from bryophytes to um, to um, angiosperms, and, and the idea is to include not only the accepted names but also a comprehensive synonym uh, synonyms that could uh, help understand the, um, the taxonomic feel out there of the names. It provides a base uh, to create a, a global flora. The, the, the previous one, the plan list, which was uh, finished in 2000, 
2010, the last version 2014, um, and many of the parts are already starting uh, started to uh, have already started to implement um, national projects of digital floras at, at the national level. Next one. So the uh, effort of trying to provide a catalog of all the, the world plants has been done uh, three times, uh, mainly. Uh, the first one, of course, was Linnaeus uh, in, with Species Plantarum. Next one. The second one was the, the Candol uh, with uh, he, who he and his, uh, his son um, collected many of the uh, uh, species of, uh, of plants. And, uh, but some of the groups were never completed. Go ahead, next one. It wasn't until, uh, uh, next one, please. Uh, 20, uh, the 21st century that the plan list came along. And as I said, the first uh, version ended up uh, providing uh, a reference for uh, all the work that is done on uh, names of plants. And, and still it is used Sometimes, uh, even when it's uh, it's not uh, up to date, another one, click, um, and actually click, yeah, and it actually needs to be updated, and, and we know that for a while, and so the project of Warfare Online comes to use this base, the next one, and get. Uh, not only a taxonomic backbone, but also the content from different floras and make it a, a resource that's a verified resource that documents the plant, the known plants of the world. Um, next one, please. It was ratified as, a, as an international project uh, in 2011, and it was presented at the uh, International Botanical Congress in Melbourne, next one, in, in 2011 that year. Uh, the first meeting was in 2012. And, and during that year, uh, the project was launched with uh, uh, many participants already starting um, in a, an international consortium. Next one. The um, Memorandum of Understanding was signed, uh, was open to sign, and it was uh, signed by uh, up to now, in, in, sorry, in January 2013. And up to now, there's uh, 47, for, uh, last one was uh, some weeks ago, um, sign signatories to the, to the agreement. Actually, there's a new agreement being uh, created for the next, uh, for the next uh, uh, period uh, till 2030. Of course, um, the members are all over the world. Um, and they contribute different uh, uh, from their different uh, strengths and skills. Um, so it's not a um, homogeneous uh, uh, group, but more of a, a contribution of uh, colleagues um, and, and institutions, each one of, of the persons um, belonging to the consortium or to the uh, council are really representing their whole institution, some, sometimes several institutions. Next one. There have been uh, several reunions, uh, mostly uh, two or three a year um, since uh, 2013. Uh, next one, next one, and next one. <laughs> uh, oh, no, sorry, sorry, previous one. Uh, the last one was uh, in July, and probably we'll have one more um, this year or maybe uh, until next year in May. Um, last year and this year, they have been uh, virtual. So uh, apparently, it might continue like that either this year. Um, we have to adapt to the situation of the world. And um, it was interesting that even when we couldn't share and, and, and we couldn't uh, really have the time that we had on, on those meetings to, to plan and work together, uh, we still ma managed to find out a way to, to do it online and work together on that. Next one. So what is Workflow Online? Well, um, well, World Flow Online is an, an open access uh, web resource that includes uh, all um, known plants, um, as I said, bryophytes and, and vascular plants um, from all the regions. So using uh, countries as the, as the basic uh, unit 
the idea is to incorporate even uh, uh, minor and major regions, uh, but mostly trying to get at least the content through the to the uh, country level. Um, it should be of uh, uh, free access through the internet, and to do this, uh, the the project really needs the experience of uh, collaborative networks and individual taxonomists to develop a consensus classification, um, as well as to get together descriptive data of published works. Next one. Um, it, the idea is that it includes a unique uh, baseline um, that uh, an authoritative unique baseline oriented to the user. Um, it's it's uh, coordinated from, uh, from all plans of the world. And it's, uh, it's a, the taxonomies are probably at the heart of generating this content, but the users really are uh, many other types of, of uh, profiles. And, and that's the, probably the strength that I would say the workflow online has, which is that it's, it's uh, provided by taxonomists and, and scientific uh, colleagues for the use of conservation and others. Um, it obtains the information from published floras, checklists, revision, taxonomic revisions, and so on. Um, and uh, next one. And as I said, it's based on the uh, uh, plan list initially, uh, but then enhanced with several other sources. The uh, target uh, uh, audience are uh, conservationists, uh, plant taxonomists, other scientists, and so on. Um, and the idea is to provide them with information that contributes to a better understanding of the uh, uh, botanic situation in an ever-changing environment. Um, conservationists should benefit from this information, uh, but also taxonomists themselves and, and scientists who work with plants, like ecologists, anthropologists, archaeologists, uh, any other. Um, the, the ones who provide the content um, are not only the pr uh, providers of uh, primary data, but also herbarium curators, taxonomists, uh, uh, data administrators, any, anyone who has published uh, content already could actually uh, help us uh, provide content associated to the taxonomic backbone. Next one. Workflow Online is organized in uh, a council. Um, it, there's three main entities. The council uh, is, uh, meets uh, twice a year at least and decides so about strategic matters. There are three subgroups that work to implement the decisions of the council during the year. Um, the uh, taxonomic working group presents proposals about classification, taxonomy, and um, gathering experts, while the technical working group is, uh, develops the architecture of the database, the content of the website, and the, the electronic tools that should be developed. The, um, Communication uh, working group is a new a newer group that has been created in order to facilitate communication between the members themselves and uh, the taxonomic uh, sorry the working groups and uh, the users and, and other public in general. Next one. So all uh, the aspects about the project can be seen on online and through the portal um, developed uh, in by the. Uh, initially by the Missouri Botanical Garden and now by uh, Edinburgh. Um, and it's uh, that address about worldfloronline.org. Um, next one. But there's also a public portal uh, based on the eMonocot software that was provided by Royal Botanical Gardens EQ. And it was uh, further developed by uh, the staff at uh, uh, Missouri Botanical Garden. Um, it was populated initially, as I said, with the taxonomic backbone from uh, the plan list, but it was enhanced with other uh, sources like uh, Solanacea source, um, uh, some of the families of Cariophilales, and so on, who've been working with us on the, on the project um, to provide more uh, information. Um, it was launched in 2017 in the International Botanical Congress in Shenzhen, China. And um, it, the address you can see, worldflowonline.org. Um, we are expecting to launch a new version this year, um, a, a much better uh, enhanced version of not only the, the content, but also the website and uh, other tools that are needed. Go ahead. 
Next one, please. Look, so um, the, the e-monocrit portal has two parts. Um, one is the nomenclatural and taxonomic backbone. And that's uh, one content that we are getting. But there's also uh, what we call content or descriptive content that's associated to this taxonomic backbone. Next one. So in a way, the backbone works like that, like a backbone to which gets associated. Next one. And there's several here. Descriptions, distributions, uh, common names, images, um, and uh, conservation status and other information like habit, habitat, and so on. As you can see, this information is, of course, related uh, to the um, what we have already in extensions from the Darwin Core Archive. So what is the taxonomic backbone? The taxonomic backbone is a checklist, a con uh, global consensus, consensuated checklist. Um, so it means that it has a unique taxonomic concept. And this is important because uh, one of the challenges there is how do we get this unique concept into the uh, to taxonomic backbone when we have several sources, which could actually be uh, dealing with different concepts. So for now, we're dealing with one taxonomic uh, concept, uh, which comes from the consensus of the uh, provided by the taxonomic working group. It is curated by the botanical community. We have uh, the help and the, the assistance of um, taxonomy expert networks that work for different groups, mostly families. So the taxonomy expert network is usually created uh, under a family and they provide the actual uh, taxonomy that should be updated. One important thing is we, we can provide them content initially for them to, to use, but they are the ones who decide how it's gonna be um, uh, contributed. And um, then the specialists, um, which are not only people from the uh, taxonomy expert network, but users that you know, come and provide us feedback or give us their impressions and so on, on um, updates of the, of the backbone. Next one. Um, so the, um, this is a quick uh, scheme of how the, the World Flow Online works. Um, the taxonomy expert networks have their own projects. They help us, as I said, for a, a consensual, consensual classification. Um, the descriptions from the, prop, from the floras and a checklist and other uh, publications are harvested through the harvester of the e monocot into a database, uh, the World Flow Online database. And that database eventually is the one that gets shown through the portal outside, or uh, very soon we hope contributed to the catalog of life and from there to GPS. Um, we have other ways that we're creating to, to put the data out, um, but those are, are coming up. Uh, next one. So the infrastructure actually is uh, on the Google Cloud, and this is thanks to the New York Botanical Garden, who had a, an agreement with Google, um, and they provided us with their space and their uh, 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 agreement to have uh, three, actually uh, three uh, uh, environments, three diff different environments. Actually, they're the same environment replicated three times. We have one testing for testing purposes where we upload anything and try anything we want. We have a staging one where we model what we want to have and that's where uh, the actual uh, information ends up. And then we have a production which we only, we never harvest there. We just copy the information from stage. And the reason for that is to avoid having the uh, website down for uh, too much time. Next one. So as I said, it's a collaborative project. And, and as you can see, it starts getting um, collaborative in the sense of uh, many of the uh, participants are the ones providing the basic needs for the project. And, and that's uh, something I wanted to stress out if anybody's thinking about doing any of these projects. Uh, it has to be collaborative as uh, um, Donald was mentioning. It has to have uh, uh, take advantage of the community. Um, the members of the project provide the general organization, the council, the support in this case. Um, the platform is the eMonica donated by Q. Um, the development of the portal is uh, based on eMonica and is done at Missouri. The use of the Google Cloud uh, is uh, provided by, by New York Botanical Garden. 
and some work on the uh, user interface and tools has been provided by uh, Rio de Janeiro, Missouri, Edinburgh, and others. And this is just the ones that have uh, guided these processes, but in actual, the, the group, the, the, the working groups, um, include a lot of other people uh, from other institutions. Next one. Um, and so the, the graphic design was been, has been just uh, changed by um, Edinburgh, the uh, improved actually very much by Edinburgh. Uh, the work on the backbone and, and, uh, and uh, TPL was done by uh, Q and by uh, Edinburgh too. Um, Geneva is providing uh, uh, taxonomic administration tool. Um, and uh, then of course the, the expert networks, the, the taxonomy experts in the networks are actually the ones doing the, the work. Go ahead, next one. This is a list of approved taxonomy expert networks. Um, and I'm not sure how updated this is because it, it's always growing. It means that underneath that uh, there's uh, different uh, sizes of people working from uh, five people, some of them um, or uh, to 80 or more uh, in the biggest uh, groups. And it doesn't mean that they are working only for the project, actually that we are uh, using, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're joining them with the work that they're already doing and having their uh, uh, publications and so on included in the taxonomic backbone. Um, next one. One of the first things that we had to decide and we had to do, um, which might be a, a topic for, for long hours, was to decide on an, a unique identifier. And the reason for that was because um, we had, we could use the IMI ID, but then we had to include bryophytes. And that meant that we would need some sort of ID or, or, or on our own to reference to the, all the names that we're gonna have. So the WFO ID, as we like to call it, is just uh, WFO followed, followed by 10 digits. Um, it's, it's, it doesn't mean, just because you see it, it doesn't mean that the format means anything. Although we started like that for just for, uh, uh, easiness, we needed to, to find a way to show, um, differentiate them just by looking at the number, but in reality, they're obscure. So it doesn't mean that you can tell. Um, so this division that you see very pretty and very nice might and probably will be um, overridden and we would have dominions in, uh, in 270s and, and divisions in 500 and so on. But the good thing about it is that it's unique and we don't delete any of this. Once we use, once we assign a name to one of these IDs, we keep them. If the taxonomic expert network decides to um, eliminate one of the names, what we actually do is that uh, we exclude it from the list. We mark it as excluded, but the number and, the, and the, it's still there because we need it for the work that we need to do. This name, whatever it is, it's going to be there and people are, are going to refer to the number two and we need a way to make sure that eventually we can figure out what happened to this we just can't delete it as, as in any database we have to keep track of all these numbers and we do that um, it requires certain um, certain complexity but um, it, it, I, I think it pays off when we're able to determine what happens and and because of the way that it allows to track what happens throughout time Next one. So with that W4ID, what we do is um, we, of course, any name that we receive, we assign a W4ID. Um, usually this is by uh, providers who give us their content. Uh, we, lead, we read the file, we compare the values to the back, taxonomic backbone to see if we have that name. We recover the W4ID and then we generate an output file with the assigned W4ID and other comments if there was no association. That sounds really, really nice. It really, really easy. Uh, it turns out that that gets uh, a lot, very, very complicated uh, as, as we go forward because the matching, of course, as you might figure, is not exact. So sometimes we get a, a close matching, although it's not the right name that we're looking for. Um, so it means that we have to adapt the process and the process being adapted to 
things like uh, different endings that actually don't mean different thing. And we have been provided not only a yes match or not match, but a near match and, a, and, a, and, a, and a, uh, something that almost matches, but uh, uh, it's not in, in the case that if we have a match with the name, but not with the authors, for example, then um, we have to decide what to do because maybe it is the same file, but just just that it has different uh, authors. And the first we thought, yeah, it's the same. It's just an error. And then we realized that there's a lot of homonyms and a lot of things that have to be considered in the process that you can't just assign a W4 ID by checking the name. You have to look at the at the uh, everything that goes with it, the, the author, even the publication if it exists, the family also, and so on. Next one. So um, that brings a lot of uh, challenges, and uh, and the challenges that we have would be um, different types, different types of uh, inconsist inconsistent uh, management of information. Um, we have uh, diverse sources in different formats. Um, we don't have like really a budget to the project itself, except for the three people. Um, the rest is really collaborative and a lot of people are providing um, um, collaborative uh, content to an uh, end time to what we need to do. Um, we also have uh, tools that uh, support the portal. The tools of the portal in themselves were not documented. So we really have to come up with a way to document them. Um, the project does not include uh, any development uh, of the portal itself or the harvester. So we have to manage with what we have. And um, as I said, many of the, of the uh, people involved is voluntary. Next one. Uh, okay, I think we don't have the last version, but that's okay. Well, um, so it means that we have we have had to look at things like uh, how does it work, and as I said, we have to look for what are the values that it, re it receives, uh, 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 figure out from the behavior of the system how it goes. Um, that's just something that we did in the first years of the project. Next one, and. Um, gladly something that uh, we think that we know now uh, how it's done. We have to try a lot of things that fail. Uh, next one. Uh, we have to find different uh, uh, tweak, tweaks to the things that uh, could be done. Uh, some of the names could not be capitalized. Some of the, um, at least in, in some of the fields, in others it was. Um, because of the way it was programmed, some of the names were not really strings, there were Java classes and so on and so on. Um, you know, the interesting and, and uh, uh, delightful part of it. Next one. We also had, uh, we, it was decided by the, 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 taxon the council that the taxonomic backbone will be shared as ZZ0. But all the descriptions associated, of course, have their own um, license. We promote to use uh, Creative Commons licenses, uh, but we actually had to find out, next one, a way to handle those in, uh, because it wasn't complete in the portal as we had it, we had to do some, some changes. And the reason to mention all this is to, to point out that any tool that you get, any, any software that you use, is going to require some, some uh, adaptation, some management, and, and some so uh, above all, some maintenance. Next one. Any of this does not convert to a valid uh, CC0 value in the database because it has some sort of issue there. Uh, it turns out, for example, that it only accepted 3.0. And um, the way it was done was not uh, uh, interpreted correctly. So either we had to change the code of the portal or we had to find out which are the values that could be used. Next one. <coughs> we had to go and find uh, some some of the um, even logos that were supposed to be used in the code were not come didn't come with a with a software and we had to add them but again this is all things that you learn from the tool that you're using now if you want to change the tool as you probably want after some years all this experience all this uh, knowledge um, turns out to be zero and then you have to start again with a new tool next one 
we learned best practices from handling the Darwin Core archives and, and how to how to read them in the in the uh, GBIF validator. Um, we we validated uh, any at, at some point we decided that anything that we were going to harvest should be validated by GBIF Darwin Core validator because it will help us find the most common errors. And what were those? Well, wrong encoding in the text. Uh, the line ending was different than what it was supposed to be. Uh, some IDs had zeros instead of O's, so they wouldn't be found. Um, the location in the places, the, the delimiters, the way that the dates were formatted and so on. All these are actually um, learned lessons that help us now look at sometimes a message from the validator and know what it is. It, even if it doesn't say just the way that the error message comes out, you know what it is and you can go and correct it because it's been for a while uh, something that you've deal, dealt with. Next one. But we also have lessons learned from the portal itself. Uh, things that uh, should be um, used or, sh or, sh or should be assumed even when they're not in any documentation and how their things are created, uh, what things are used, where they are displayed or not. We had to actually go and check every single thing that goes into the harvester and find out if it was displayed or not, if it was uh, uh, stored in the database or not, and how it was stored actually. Next one. So we did define a, a process for a pre-harvesting. We, we define a, a pre, what we call a pre-harvesting database, which is, yes, we get all these Darwin Core archives and we do some checks. And after doing those checks, we do the name matching for whoever provides us um, a Darwin Core archive that they want. And then from there come with the resolution on matching. Um, if, if it's there, then uh, we already have a W4ID. If it's not there, we're going to need uh, someone to look into it and decide if they go in. Um, we have had in, uh, income uh, or new names coming from um, regional floras, for example, which are names that were not in the main lists, uh, IBNI, the World Check, uh, World Check list, uh, World Check vascular plants, um, the, any of these uh, big uh, aggregators some of the things that are very regional or endemic or so on turn out to be added by the uh, regional floras. Next. So the portal has at the end a, 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 a taxon page um, and it provides, and, and the reason here is not, not for you to read, but look at all these things. It has a name which comes from the taxonomy it has illustrations that come from one of the provider. One of the providers can provide images. Um, then there's descriptions of different types. And each one of the descriptions is going to have a footnote. And that footnote is going to come at the end in a list of where it comes from. So in a way, um, because this is a very collaborative project, we have to have provenance. And we have to have recognition of who provided what. Um, not only to know when, when something is, uh, is uh, wrong or, or looks, looks uh, uh, not correctly, but mostly to recognize the work that's been done, the contributions that are being done. Um, one of the main critics, critics uh, points that, that people criticize and aggregators is that they disappear the sources. And one of the things that we decided from early on is, I don't want any changes to be done to the database unless it's done to the source. If we don't get the source changed, we're gonna get again the same error or the same difference or the same out, out of date that value and harvest it again and have the exact same problem over and over and over. The really clever thing or way to go is go to the source, do the change in the source and harvest again. The eMonocot portal is done like that. It's, it's, a, it's a batch process. You just harvest the whole thing and it's, it's just time. Once, once the, uh, the file is corrected and, and or correct, it's just time to harvest the, the content. Um, it has a bibliography, descriptions, and so on. It even has some other, other, other content. One of the things that I want to point out is what the, that link to the right, bottom right, uh, the bottom of the right uh, column, it's a link to a source. So you, we 
actually keep a link if the source, the, the one the providers has an, a, an online portal or some sort of provider, we make sure that we get that link there and it goes to the source, uh, uh, whoever that whoever provides that. The other thing is we actually uh, tend to say where the name came from. If it came from TPL initially as it was, or if it came from um, another news, Solonesi, uh, Cario Filales, uh, Hineski, any of the other providers, any of the other tents that have been providing content, we want to recognize that. We want to say that and, and show that um, that's the word that's been uh, contributed by others. Um, interesting enough, we even have the link because we are now handling the TPL too. We have the link that where it comes from to TPL. So we actually know where it comes. It's not only that it comes from TPL, another ag aggregator, but where it comes from TPL, the original database that was harvested into TPL and ha then we harvested into here. And again, that provenance, that tracking is vital if we are gonna work with this uh, um, uh, aggregators and, and, and uh, checklist, global checklist and so on, as uh, Donald was mentioning. Next one. The way that uh, the development is done, we it, it's through a uh, use cases gaps uh, reviewed by uh, by the council and that uh, in both the uh, taxonomic working group, um, the technical working group, and the council actually look at these uh, use cases and the, uh, prioritize which ones are going to be uh, first. So of course it was it was started with the ones initially. The whole initial point was to create the taxonomic backbone. But on and on, it's been more to add content and keep adding content. Uh, and hopefully in the following years, content of other types that actually come from Flores. Next one. So that's the, uh, the now it's uh, the, the public portal has been uh, uh, launched at the International uh, Botanical Congress. I said it has changed and it will change again in order to improve the look and feel of it. Um, it still manages most of the information that, that's already there, but uh, uh, hopefully the, the new look and feel uh, gets to be better. Um, users gave us the feedback. They said it was ugly <laughs> and uh, ugly and the things that we weren't doing. So we listened and we came up with, uh, hopefully it hasn't been launched, but it will be soon a better uh, user interface for the content that we have. Next one. Um, that's the old, as I mentioned, I already went through this. I just want to show that we had either the, the demo portal or the public portal that we have. They all have this content from different sources. Um, this links to the source, the right, the taxonomy on the, on the upper right uh, column. Um, it's already there and it's, a, it's what the World Forum Online is assigning to this name plus the descriptions. The descriptions are provided in different languages and that's something that uh, future work to do. It's provided in different languages. It's just as it is in the published uh, uh, work. We're not modifying it. We're just placing it there. So it's interesting to see sometimes uh, content from different languages, Spanish, English, Turkish, uh, even Chinese uh, uh, in the same um, uh, page. Um, it, Although it looks like not very useful, it, um, uh, we've had also the feedback that if we, I can see the content, I'll, I'll the, the user says, I'll translate it, I'll find a way to translate it. Just get me the content in one page so I can see it all together. Next one. That's a simplified uh, uh, workflow diagram of the workflow of uh, what we do with the, with the data input. Uh, we get a technical check, um, we, we request the, the contributor to fix it, or we validate or assign the new names and update the backbone. Next one. We have had some issues and this part, um, I'm, I'm not complaining, I'm just actually saying with, uh, with proud that uh, we have dealt with all this uh, cross family synonyms, homonyms, uh, how to manage new names when, when they come in. Um, adding to the new names to the backbone in, might mean, might imply that we have to go to the content providers, the descriptive providers and re-harvest their content too. Next one. Um, 
we might need to tailor some of the of the of the uh, information that we have, some of the con of the tools that we have, uh, or ask that they be tailored to our needs, um, or we just might have to find a way to to deal with it. For example, um, the validators itself. Uh, there's some uh, part of the taxonomy that it won't handle, but we know that, and and we just we just happy to ignore that as long as those are the only errors that we can see. Again, the validator helps a lot because it takes out many of the most common errors. And when I say common, I'm, I'm talking about myself. I've made them a lot of times over and over and over until I realized what was, was, was me, the actual um, error or error producing uh, uh, element. Next one. Um, there are issues like uh, the infrastructure itself or the uh, the uh, update of the content. We have to, you have to think about this is going to be a process, an ever changing process. And even when at first it looks great and it, it's, it, it seems to work, it's going to change throughout time. And it's part of the resources that you're going to have to dedicate to this. Um, as it was saying in, in, in one of the talks, um, you have to think that this is going to change and you, you, you have to actually maintain it somehow. Um, we had to test the portal and test uh, some of the things that we had and, and that takes time. So yes, it's not gonna be up right there. We actually have to go and test some things and the, the users and uh, the colleagues have to have come to learn that this, this might take some, some time. Um, when we have to review some of the content, um, how, gladly we have the, the help of um, very knowledgeable taxonomists um, and I wanna praise the, uh, my colleagues either uh, my database administrator and, and programmer, Sunita, or Alan Elliott at, at the Royal Botanical Garden in Edinburgh, who can get a list of thousands of names and review them in from one day to the other and come up with the solutions of how to set them up according to the publications, existing publications, um, uh, so that the taxonomy ends up in the right way. Next one. Um, yeah, well, that's a, a thing that always comes up. We need more uh, developers, yes. Uh, next one. Um, interesting enough, we came up with a, a group of terms that were not included in Darwin Core standard. So even when we're trying to use the standards, there are some things that are not there. Um, we review them at the end, only three of them were actually asked to be included. And I think uh, at least one of them was considered in the last review of the Darwin Core standard. Next one. Uh, this is a nice example. I, I took this from a, from a colleague from Mark Watson at Edinburgh. Um, this is an update. Uh, how, what software components we're using for the e Monica currently. And if you see, most of them are out of date. The problem is that we can update just one without breaking sometimes the others. And it has come to a point where we can even generate some of the modules because the code does not exist anymore. Um, the way that it's programmed this, this is that it, it goes and brings the newest version from a repository. Well, some of those repositories go away. And yes, we found it the hard way when we try to re recompile, the, for example, the TPL to realize that some of the initial content, some additional repositories are already gone and we're not able to regenerate that from scratch. We have to use one already regenerated. We're lucky that the, the colleagues at Q already had uh, those uh, contents regenerated and we were able to uh, uh, put the TPL in another place. But again, it's, uh, it's a very delicate software to move or to update, just like the uh, e monica we found. Next one. Now, this is more uh, reality of how we deal with new names. Um, you know, there was a nice big boxes there, but then you have to start looking at places where you stop because you're gonna need a review and that's gonna take some time. And as, as fast as Alan is, we can assume that he's gonna be, always gonna be uh, there and that fast we have really have to give him some time to review some of the, of the content, uh, which he always does way too fast. Uh, um, he just comes back from one day to the other and it's already reviewed, but we have, those are, are times where the process has to stop. 
and some of the uh, rec records stop there, some of them follow up the, the workflow. And even when it was a, a unit at the beginning, it might not be a unit. It starts trickling down to different places and stopping in different places. Um, so uh, what, what you thought would be one file and one thing to, that will go through the, through the process ends up in different pieces, uh, different places at different times with a, a different pace. Um, that was a, a, an interesting lesson that we had to to manage because uh, some some of those could stop and be there for a while. Next one. And now I'm going to just uh, show some of the screens of uh, re old reports that we have from different different working groups. Um, this is, for example, when it was decided that um, we will uh, use the APG4 classification, which was a major change to the content. Um, because uh, uh, TPL was not with APG4, so we had to redo the higher taxonomy, and that means to relocate some of the uh, genera in uh, different places. Uh, we have to go and look where things are going to go now, and so on. Um, next one. The deduplication is uh, was a, it's been a major task, and again, I mentioned these because this is the experience that we had, and I know that anyone who's going to deal with several taxonomist list, taxonomic lists is going to go to phase this. There are many things that look the same, but are not. And um, you get uh, things in different families with the same name. Uh, probably they don't have the author and that's where the problem comes from or probably was a mistake or whatever. But then you start finding things that are really, uh, that shouldn't be there, but the actual reality is that they are. So we kept getting this list gladly because it's in a database. We can do these comparisons throughout all the families, throughout all the taxonomic backbone and get what we call the duplicates. Now the duplicates doesn't mean that they are, they are duplicated. It means that they're candidates for a duplication. So that if we run the process, a simple process, we tend to find these things that are two or three um, that are actually replicated in, in different places. And that's, uh, that's something that it's been, uh, well, it's been time consuming, but it's also been very interesting because we're aiming to um, reduce that amount to something that we can uh, on and on manage less and less. Now, every time that you get a new source in comes the risk of getting new duplicates in. That's why the checking of the name has to be so um, detailed. Next one. Okay, that's just uh, um, the, the Taxonomy working group decided on what uh, taxonomy experts will be uh, included, what the stage was, and who was going to be contact. But I want to point, I put this slide there because it's where um, it was decided in 2018 that we're going to need a taxonomy expert network manager. And that's Alan Elliott in, in Edinburgh. And he's the one who's been actually uh, key to the whole process of being a uh, one a single uh, taxonomic backbone. Next one. Yeah, that's uh, the same <laughs> interesting the comment there, reality check needed, uh, because we had to go and contact some people that were not uh, actually coming. We didn't know exactly how many species those uh, tents would include. Next one. Okay, next one. Uh, this one is because I wanted to point it out because because these ones from, from catalog, catalog of Life. So Catalog of Life already has global species databases that actually could become um, um, taxonomy expert networks, and there was a conversation with uh, different groups in Catalog Life and the Catalog Life itself on how we could handle this um, this content that uh, it's already authoritative and it's it's already there. Um, one of the things that we intend to do, if, if I didn't mention it before, is we're going to provide the uh, whole taxonomic backbone, which is in the web, in the website we get this. Uh, Snapshots, periodic snapshots. The last one was uh, oof, too, too long ago, two, two years, I think. And we're about to generate a new one, actually. Um, it's, uh, it's been in preparation because we want to keep updating that so people can use it and, and upload it in, in the tools or the whatever they want to use it. Next one. Okay, next one. Um, I want to mention here, as I, as I said before, some of the names came turned out to come 
from endemics of regional um, floras. Turns out that many of the Madagascar, uh, Australia, South Africa, Brazil, um, and others actually gave us uh, many names. Next one. Next one. Okay, um, and here what I wanted to show is the technical, this is the, now the technical group and the technical working group how has, has been work or work on what's called the uh, computer guides. And this is a point on documentation. We really need to document the process to explain others how things are gonna be included, how they're gonna be deal, dealt with, uh, how they're expected, uh, the process of reviewing, uh, assigning and so on. Um, and that's, that's hard and that, that takes time. That takes time. It, it's ever changing. Um, next one. We uh, we actually had to do some. We ended, or right now we have three guidelines on how to provide a general one for anyone who wants to provide content, one for the people who provide us with taxonomy, and one for the people who provide us with uh, descriptive content. Next one. Okay. How are we on time? Um, we have uh, our extra, we've been talking for 15, 50 minutes, maybe oh. last slides if it's possible, but just. Okay, just, uh, but then let's go to the end. No, just the end, you have to move to the end. It's, it's gonna okay. Take, it's gonna take you a while, no, no, no. <laughs> But maybe we, we can talk 10 more okay. minutes. So okay. one important thing here is that every time that you have lists, checklists, and you want to incorporate with another one, you're going to have this mismatch. And you're going to have some things that match perfectly. And then you can assign numbers and IDs and everything. And then you have the ones who don't behave well, the ones that are in this list, but not in the other, the ones that are in the other, but not in this one, the ones that have had the same name, but a different DID, the ones that are repeated and, and so on and so on. So that process we had several times. We had it to go not only with all the, any, any checklist that we receive or any names that we receive, we had to do it with IBNI IDs in order to get the codes from IBNI and in order to get uh, uh, from uh, the uh, world checklist the vascular plans, the information on uh, taxonomic status and publications. Um, that means that most of them agree, but some of them are always uh, used uh, or, or or outside. And in order to provide any of the tens some content, we also had to do that, that process of incorporating one list and the other and giving them not only the ones that are okay and uh, we already know, but the ones that are the outliers from both of them. Go ahead, just uh, move to the, to the end. Yeah, that's a process of how it is for the tens for Agricasia, Musasia, Stilicasia, and Euphorbiasia, how we ended up giving them a, a mix of the names that we have in W4ID, the names that came up from IBNI, and, and the names that were in World Checks of Vascular Plants, for them to work with all those names and decide how is it the taxonomy going to be. Yeah, next week. Next, next, next. The coverage of uh, IBNI and went from 83 to almost 89%. And this allows now that we're, uh, this is still to be deployed, a way to um, link with IBNI and TPL from uh, World Flow Online. So World Flow Online is gonna have an endpoint where we can just go and link with these other sources um, just in the URL. Go ahead, next one. Yeah, uh, I already mentioned that, mm -hmm. the new names. This is an example of uh, the, the, the names that came from different places, from APG4, from, um, from different uh, tens, from um, uh, regional floras and so on. By, uh, this is last year, June last year, go ahead, yeah. This is uh, some of the checks that we had corrected already. Uh, we had, used to have synonyms, synonyms, valid names with synonyms as a parent. We had a, a, a name that was excluded as a parent of something that's still on the taxonomy. We had so on, so on. We had to check all those 
So these are the quality control checks that we do on the taxonomy. Um, we reduced this number to zero, um, this one and the next one, uh, in a couple of months ago. Um, it might come up again, but at least it's not going to be what it was before. Go ahead. Uh, those things were also kind of things that we do and report on what the things that we do for the taxonomic backbone. Go ahead. Yeah, we already talked about this. The, uh, okay, again, go ahead. Duplicates, go, go back. Duplicates is something interesting because some of the sources have duplicates. Some of the, we found duplicates in TPL, we found duplicates in IBNI, we found duplicates in some of the lists that we get already come with a duplicate. And of course we, we freak out when we see a duplicate and say, oh no, we, we, messed, we messed up, we did something error, but it turns out it's usually, uh, it might be sometimes not us. It just comes from the source like that. It was interesting to find those cases. Not many of them, but at least some of them. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. This is the list of uh, uh, providers. This is the process. The yellow ones are in the works of descriptive contents. Um, some of them are too big to handle, so we have to divide them. Go ahead and, and manage them in, in batch files. Go ahead. Some of the organizations provide us several of them, different types of descriptions. Go ahead. Yeah. This is the number of taxa that have description, and this is the number of descriptions by taxon rank. This is with the taxonomic status. Uh -huh. And go ahead. I think you have to jump to the, yes, this is the to-do list. We want to get to 600 by the end of 2021. <clears throat> we need more 10. So if you want, if you're working at 10, you're a taxonomist, you want to contribute, please contact Dr. Wise Jackson, the, our chair. Um, he'll be delighted to have you on board, create a new 10 for the, your group if it doesn't exist and collaborate in the workflow online. Go ahead, next one. Um, there's a publication on the project on how we did all this and it goes into more detail what I mentioned. Um, I recommend it if you haven't seen it. <clears throat> yes, go ahead. Go ahead. And also we have a presentation in Tadwick um, this month, by the end of this month, about um, our challenges, the solutions, workflows, a little more of what I've just mentioned today um, in case you want to follow up. Thank you very much. Next one. That's it. So thank you very much, William. Um, does we have any questions? Um, I'm not. Oh, Annabella, please. Thank you, Clara. Hi, William. How are you? I have some question. Well, I'm a botanist, so this is <laughs> something really interesting to me. And I want to know how the work flow online resolve, for example, the accepted name on Tropicos, because you can find a name and then in in one part or all a list of accepted name and each taxonomist used to choose which name is the, the right for them. Yes. In, in the case of Workflow Online, if, if there's a 10, if there's a taxonomic expert network, they're the ones who decide which one would be the accepted one and the, the others, the, the synonym. If there's not a 10, we have started by uh, taking uh, the TPL and updating with the world checks on vascular plants, if it's, it's a vascular plants. In case of bryophytes, we're following Tropicus actually. Um, okay. And from then either we, we get hopefully a, a taxonomic expert networks to review it. Um, sometimes we do get feedback from, from our users. Um, they even provided, a, the last week we got a, a message, interesting message saying, look, you don't have these species which were already published and this ones are not all right and so on. Um, 
we do get people to contribute and, and, and correct some of the, uh, the uh, mistakes or decisions that need to be done. But mainly we follow what the, what the taxonomy expert networks tell us um, through, we go through the, our taxonomy expert network manager, Alan Elliott. Um, he is the one who provides with that kind. He, he deals with a taxosphere and he's the one who provides us with uh, the answers to those questions on which one should we choose to put as valid and, and synonym. Good. I, and I am curious because I saw on your list that for Asterasi was Vicky Funk and Vicky passed away in 2019. Who is in charge of the Asterasi? The Asterasi, I think it's a, a word that is still working, a tent that's still working. They haven't, they haven't given us any update. Um, we do have an update that's coming, um, but it was coming this month, but it's going to come before uh, December. Uh, but I'm not sure, I don't think it includes Astrasia. It might include updates on Astrasia from uh, the World Check and Basketball Plans, but not from the TEN itself. The TEN itself, I think, hasn't provided the final um, um, taxonomic uh, classification. Um, but Alan could tell you, I can, I can find out Alan, who's, who's, who's uh, leading that. Uh, it should okay. be in the website, I think. But if uh, I, I just mentioned because I saw that on, on your on your slide. And one last question, but not least, how we, the Argentinian botanists or the Brazilian, the Colombian, can help? Because I saw that taxon expert group, and it's quite difficult to have all the taxonomies on the same page. It's not like the Lord of the Ring, that one list is going to rule us all. It's, it's something heavy, as uh, Lee mentioned before. It, it's, it's not an easy task. Yes, yes, it's not. And, and one caveat I'm going to say from the start, I said, this is a consensus taxonomy. We follow what the taxonomy expert networks tell us, um, which means it's a way of uh, yeah, you're not dealing with the problem because you're assuming that it's going to come with one consensus. And the whole big issue, taxonomically speaking, is to decide actually what that consensus is. So yes, we're dealing with the, the, the criteria of that group of experts to decide, in that case, how that's going to be um, uh, managed. Um, so we, the technical people, are not deciding anything. I, I don't want to decide anything at all. I, any questions that I have, taxonomic questions, go to the taxonomic expert network manager through there to the to the group if there is a group. Um, and, and I know, of course, that all that is arguable. Uh, you know, there's opinion, and that's part of the taxonomy. Um, so, in a way, I think eventually, and then our Australian colleagues have pointed this out. Eventually, we're going to have to to evolve to a taxonomy as, as a, a thing uh, Donald was mentioning where we handle, and, and the big word here is concept, where we handle the, the concept. So this has been going on for years now. It's, okay, the name according to, I'm gonna use this name, it's according to this publication or it's according to this uh, way that I'm gonna use it. And this is different from that other way with the same name, but used differently. When we get there, we're gonna be able to handle those different criteria inside the, the, the main, as it should be handled in terms of, you know, uh, data management. But in the meantime, we need to manage that with a grain of salt, and this somebody has to decide which one it is. Um, we can't put, well, we could put two names, but then it's going to create, you know, the problem of, okay, now what do I do? Actually, for us, having two names, exactly two names, is one of the reasons why we get those duplicates. Um, we get the same name with different author or different a uh, bassinim uh, author, uh, and then for us that it's uh, too close one to each other, suspiciously close. So we usually send it back and say, okay, Alan, can you tell us, is this really a duplication or not? So, so yes, now in case of Argentina, uh, one of the things I would uh, go is look at the, uh, the uh, groups there are. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there are groups in Argentina uh, Argentina, 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 that um, should only be there or could only be there. So that's a low hanging fruit. But also, even when if it's a bigger group, um, I would love to have see people uh, involved in the taxonomy expert networks. 
but also I would love to see um, feedback from those groups telling us like, no, this is this should change. This should be differently. Um, okay. that, those, yeah. those kind of uh, feedback is, is really valuable. It's really appreciated. Great. We are not so diverse like Brazil or, or Colombia, but we have many specialist groups here and some they are quite strong, like the one in Asterase or Favase. Well, and I think they're going to be glad to participate. Maybe we can talk something Indeed. later and we can explain that to the Botanical Society here. Thanks. And uh, thank you, Annabella. And uh, there's any more questions? Um, Camila? Hi, William. Thank you. It was very interesting to see the, uh, the, the hard work behind World Flora. And um, are you planning to have any kind of tool to have a, like an automatic matching with the with the backbone, I saw you have a very nice Darwin Core archive that the users can download, but beyond that, maybe you are planning for, I don't know, like an APA or a, an online tool. So yes, uh, yes and yes and yes, the three. <laughs> uh, the, we, we, we do have a Darwin Core archive with all the taxonomic backbone and, and it's, it's to download there and it's the whole thing. Now a caveat there, it's DX is the included names, not the excluded ones. So we don't put out there what was already excluded uh, in order to avoid confusions. The, uh, the second thing is we do have, um, um, there's an API and our portal and system has an API, not really much published. Um, I have documentation, I created documentation. We haven't really published it yet, mainly for the same reasons that, that were mentioned in, uh, in the case of worms. Uh, because we know that it's going to be a lot of, uh, of uh, load for our servers. Um, and we have to really test some of the minor details. But I have used, I have even created a, a couple of macros in Excel that you see a name and it brings a W4ID or you see a W4ID and it brings a name. Um, that kind of things, uh, it's, it's uh, interesting to, to do and, and use. Um, so there's an API, yes. And the third one, which actually well, one thing I'm going to say, it comes from eMonocot. It's not that we created it. It already comes from eMonocot. You know, eMonocot had its own APA, API, sorry, API. And we didn't, uh, we just uh, made sure that it would work with, uh, with Workflow Online. Um, and the last thing is, yes, there is, and, and maybe I shouldn't uh, spoil, uh, there's a spoiler alert here. There is a, a project by our colleagues of Edinburgh to produce a uh, tool of, um, um, I'm gonna say uh, snap, the snapshot, that same uh, snapshot, but in a way that you can query it and in a way that you can handle it. Um, um, it's a really interesting, um, it's, it's gonna come out now with the, with the update but before the end of this year. Um, uh, and it's really helpful because that's the kind of thing that you can actually do queries against. Um, it has an API, uh, very, uh, actually has several <laughs> ways to, to query it. Um, and uh, yeah, that hopefully that will get a, a, a way to, to handle uh, much better. And the last thing I'm gonna say is we have a colleague uh, created a World Flora R package that actually helps with the matching of names. Um, and it's, uh, it's been working for some time now and he's been improving it and it's been really used. So you can also check on that one. Thank you. And um, thank you. Thank you, William. Thank you, Camila. Thank you so much.